Saul Canelo Alvarez will undoubtedly be a name that is spoken about for many years to come within the boxing world. What he's gone on to achieve in his career is nothing short of legendary, and many say that it may never be done again. You would think that with all of the belts he's won, all of the money he's made, and all the thrilling fights he's been involved in, he would be satisfied with his career and his accolades. But not this man. Canelo continues to surprise us all with his courage, his endeavor for greatness, and his desire to push limitations, and his next move in boxing only echoes that sentiment. In this video, we'll be talking about Canelo's move up to the cruiserweight division. Yes, the cruiserweight division. But before we do so, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Over the last decade or so, Canelo has gone on to become not only one of the most recognizable faces in boxing, but has gone on to create history within the sport. It was a headshot, down he goes shot. to the body and that should do it. It's over. That is it. It's over. Ricky Gonzalez makes the right call. In his last outing against fellow super middleweight Caleb Sweet Hands Plant, all of the belts would be on the line in a truly historical occasion at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. After a few close early rounds, Canelo, in usual fashion, began to hunt Caleb down and began to turn up the heat on the slick counterpuncher from Tennessee. From then on, it was pretty much domination from Saul, and in the 11th round, he landed a lead left hand followed by a chopping uppercut to send Caleb to the canvas. Plant's legs would never recover from the shot, and a second knockdown would prove to be the end for the American. Canelo had done it. He had just become the only boxer in history to become the undisputed four-belt super middleweight world champion. So after winning multiple world championships and pretty much cleaning out the super middleweight division, you'd think there isn't much left to do in terms of legacy for the Mexican. Not in his mind. From what we understand, Canelo Alvarez will take to the ring in the cruiserweight division sometime next year, most likely May or June time, against cruiserweight world champion Ilunga Makabu. Up at cruiserweight, Makabu has fast become one of the most recognized and respected names within the division. Having only picked up two losses within his professional career, the first being in his first ever professional bout against Kayeni Lungwain, and the second being against Britain's Tony Bellew in 2016. Although it has to be said, after his loss against Bellew, Makabu hasn't lost a fight since and has recently become the WBC World Cruiserweight Champion. But it isn't only his achievements that command respect. One of Makabu's biggest attributes in the ring is his devastating power. More specifically, his ability to end the fight within the blink of an eye via a single punch. So how will the cruiserweight champion match up in the ring against Canelo Alvarez? Will Makabu's natural size and power be too much for the Mexican to handle? Or can Canelo use his ever-growing arsenal to make history once again? Let's take a look. When the pair faced off for the first time at the WBC convention, it was clear to see the size difference. Granted, Makabu was wearing a large jacket at the time, and Canelo will undoubtedly bulk up before they meet in the ring next year, which may even things out a little more. But nonetheless, it would be fair to say that Makabu will probably be heavier than Canelo when they do eventually step in the ring. De, de pelear este título y, y, y poder seguir haciendo historia, poner una estrellita más a mi, a mi carrera y más que nada agradecerle la oportunidad. In many ways, Canelo can do it all in the boxing ring. Over recent years, his defensive side of the game has become one of the best in the business, presenting us with highlight reel moments of Canelo judging both distance and speed of incoming punches all too perfectly, at times making opponents look like amateurs. In terms of going forward, Canelo has all to offer. The way he mixes up his combinations and his power shots, as well as his front foot pressure, has caused his opponents nightmares. Most start off fairly successful in the opening rounds, but just simply cannot hold off Canelo Alvarez for the duration, as we saw in his last bout against Plant. But for this one, things may be a little different if Canelo isn't on his game from the offset, or if he takes a little too long to figure Makabu out. The thing is, is that what gives Canelo problems and issues are guys that can move. He still is there still a weakness there. There's still I'm telling you, there's still a weakness there. Okay? 
It is. He has problems with guys that move. Out of his victories, Makabu has knocked out 25 of his 28 opponents. So come next year, it may be only one of the few times that Canelo will go into the ring with a power disadvantage. However, this isn't the only thing that could cause the Mexican some problems. Not only is he a southpaw, but Makabu can be fairly reckless and go gung-ho with his punches. This may seem like a disadvantage, and in many ways it could be, but off-trajectory, chaotic combinations from different angles that possess power is something Canelo needs to be aware of when he's fighting Makabu. Just take former heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder, for example. Although his technique isn't from the book, nine times out of ten, he's managed to KO most opponents he's been inside the ring with. We know Canelo can take a shot, as we saw in his two bouts with Triple G, but will he be able to take a fully-fledged cruiserweight's power? Or will Canelo's superior skill, experience, and ring IQ pay dividends up at cruiserweight as well? At this point, Canelo never fails to surprise the boxing world, but will this be just a step too far for the Mexican? So what will a victory mean for Alvarez? Well, he would make history once again by becoming a five-weight world champion and join names such as Manny Pacquiao, Thomas Hearns, Oscar De La Hoya, and his former opponent and the only ever man to defeat Canelo, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Not only this, but like those illustrious names, he will cement himself in boxing folklore and will go down as arguably the best and most accomplished to ever grace the sport of boxing. Furthermore, this would put him in a lucrative position to face the other champions within the division if he wishes to do so. I'm pretty sure people will see a great and good fight because both of us were a great fight, but he make a mistake to come in uh, away television. I'm going to knock out Canelo out of business. Thanks. No doubt that beating Canelo would be a huge achievement, and he would be catapulted into stardom as only the second ever man to beat the Mexican. But some may see it differently in terms of the weight difference. Canelo's experience up at the weight and many more factors could present some discussion post-fight if Makabu were to pull off the win. But although Canelo would be making the trip up two weight divisions, the early signs are that the bookies will still have the Mexican as a heavy favorite heading into the fight. I don't know why he would do that. Why wouldn't he just continue to fight the top fighters that he hasn't fought already? But if he's doing that, I'm going to say it's a duck. You think it's a duck from yeah. David? If you're moving, if you moving up there, and, you know, you could at least say, okay, I'm going to take one more fight with a Charlo or one more fight with a Benavidez. Good for him he wants to go up to cruiserweight. But if you want to keep doing that stuff and you're going up above, then, once, then I don't want to hear it. Fight better BF. But what do you think? Is Canelo near on untouchable with a pair of gloves on? Or will this be a step too far for him in the cruiserweight division? Whatever the outcome, this is sure to be a moment in history. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.